Hello, this is Elisa A. Lewis, and I am doing some sketches right now of an idea for some art. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions, please send them in. I will check from time to time on exactly what I'm going to be drawing. So I was thinking about um, Charles Hens and what kind of art the restaurant might enjoy. So I'll show you some of my ideas. So I thought over here, maybe we have a food display of a bunch of burgers and fries and a drink. Maybe over here, we have an eagle and a burger, since this is a restaurant that the founder is an Eagle Scout. So why not include an eagle? Over here, we have an image of an eagle um, frying up some, not frying up, grilling up some burgers and hot dogs and um, something on a kebab and drinking a beer. And then we have a bird down here, the eagle again, uh, tossing up some of the food that is served at Charlton's. And then I thought about a football, but that was just a very weak thought. And then I have this right here, which is a farmer getting food out of some plots of land. So I'm just brainstorming right now and trying to figure out exactly what kind of art I wanna make for uh, the restaurant. Uh, if you have any ideas, please go ahead and toss that in there. Okay, so let's start. This is a, a beer and a burger place. So it's like bar and grill. Let's think, uh, I really like the farming idea. If there was a farmer just in the field, maybe kneeling down this time before the farmer was standing up. And I think that was a little awkward. Um, between the farmer kneeling down and then holding the burger like a precious baby in little farmer hands and looking down at the burger, smiling. Um, what's a farmer's hat? Like a, maybe tilt it back a little bit, a little farmer's hat tilted back. And then the field could be out here playing with the perspective a little bit. Maybe we have a lower perspective. I think that's more interesting when you're really down on the ground with the farmer and you see burgers popping up. The burgers could pop up like flowers. We have burger flowers. Ooh, we could get the farmer lost in the field of burger flowers. Maybe this is not all that's grown here. Maybe there's another plot right beside this burger field. And it's hot dogs <laughs> or wings, or maybe it's drinks. Maybe a bunch of drinks are grown here. Yeah, I like the idea of drinks. Yeah, a bunch of drinks are grown here. And it even comes with a straw, little straws <laughs> growing out in the field. I think that's really funny. And then maybe over here, there are fries. Oh, fries actually, I think that might get a little lost in translation. What do you think? What do you guys think of fries? Uh, I see that we have some people join. We have Jim has joined, Amber, Jason, Jay, um, Talea, Chris. Hello, all of you. It's so nice for you to have joined uh, this session. Please tell me if you have any ideas on how this image should look, this farm. And oh, you know what? We have to have a farmhouse in the back some sort of place for this food to grow. And it should absolutely be the restaurant. I should get an actual image of the restaurant and put it here. A little smokestack. What else should... Is a good idea. I'm gonna go back to the chat. Have this is cool. <laughs> okay, this is a an idea you all are liking. That's good. Mm, okay, what's gonna be in the background? What's in the background of a farm? There a fence, definitely. You have to protect your your crops from the animals. Fence out there. Maybe we're near the edge of the farm so we're getting closer to the fence is this farm in the middle of the city I think. 
No, let's not do a cityscape. Good idea. What's this last crop going to be right here in this plot? We have to do three. I mean, come on, we can't have just two crops being grown. So we have burgers being grown here. We have drinks coming out with little straws. Maybe off to the distant, we have something that's recognizable. What I'm going to do is go back to the restaurant's main page. Oh, I think you can't see it on my screen. And let's see what's stuff on the menu. We have ribs, donuts, uh, drinks, shrimp and grits. Oh, so many options. Let's keep it simple though. Um, hmm, maybe hot dogs. Hot dogs are recognizable. Maybe the hot dog grows on a corn stalk. <gasps> Little tall things of hot dogs. That would be delicious. Just imagine every little leaf that comes out is a hot dog. <laughs> Fully already put in his bun. And then over here, what are we gonna have in this last plot? I would love for it to be a dessert item. What's something that we're gonna notice? Um, I guess we'll go back with fries. Maybe just baskets of fries. Like how cabbage grows, we'll have fry baskets. So let me space out a little bit more. And then up front here, the perspective needs to be changed a little bit so we can see more, more interesting items. So maybe we're really close to this burger farm area, and we have big burgers up front. And that's what's in front of the camera. Okay, so just for the sake of time, I guess we'll just run with this idea, call it farm sketch. Speak now or hold your peace. Anyone against horses in the pasture? <laughs> Three is a magic number. <laughs> we can put horses out there. Um, let me see, where would the horses be? Maybe on the other side of the fence? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And what would they be doing in the, in the farm? This magical, your food's already made farm. Okay, so we have a sketch going. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the visibility of that sketch so that it's really light on the screen. I can still see it. I have an idea of where I want to go, but it's definitely not going to get in the way of when I start making this. So first things first, I want to think about the perspective of this piece. I want a, hmm, a higher horizon line so that I can see more of the farm and less of the sky. So what I'm going to do now is get my line tool out and create a horizon line. Here we go. And and then I'm going to try to get a little perspective in here. Go to my shape tool, polygon, there's on there, turn this to 99. Radius one. So 
slides 100. That is a lot. Playing around here to see exactly how we want this to go. Let's do, hmm. We could be really straightforward and do some one point perspective on here. One horse grazing, one horse in the fence. You know what, let's add the horses in at the end. Let's see where they fit. I'm gonna find somewhere in the center. Okay, that's where we'll have our person. And I don't zoom in all the way just because I like to see as much artwork as possible when I'm in the sketch stage. But then um, when I start really working on details, I'll zoom in really closely. So that's the center is where we'll put our person. Um, or we can put them off center if it's more interesting. Let's try both. So let's try it on center and let's try it off center and see what's going to be more interesting. Whenever I have an idea, I like to just try it out. So let's try having the person in the center, which is right here, kneeling over. with the burger right here. Ooh, burger. With the farmer's hat. And then let's try putting the person off to the side. I don't know why, but I love having the the character in the, the center. What do you think? Let's see, what if we had a big character? Or a smaller one? Really the size of the character is gonna tell you the importance of the character. So it's great that we have a character that is fairly medium sized, um, but I think if I'm honest, I would love this story to be about the burger farm and less about the actual farmer. So I'll go ahead and get rid of the visibility of this character. And I will do a, oh, I'm still torn. It's gonna be center or off to the side. Maybe off to the side. Yes, just to make it less about the person who, is actually farming. We'll do it off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to do a really rough sketch of what the scene is going to look like. Not as rough as the first sketch, but just something to give me a really good idea of how the scene is going to be composed. So we've got the horizon line there, right in here. Uh, somewhere off here, around this size, will be restaurant. Somewhere over here, just off center, will be the person around this size. And the burgers, I would love them to come in around this height in the image. Something around that. And else like that. And the burgers should be as far as the eye can see. So here's the horizon line, and it should vanish here.
this fields of burgers. And I wonder if there are woods back here behind the farm. Hmm. Or if there are hills. Oh, you know what? What if we had hills of of burgers? So what if this was more of a mound? I have an idea. Okay, I'm going to minimize this a little bit more. Turn off this background sketch. Put on a sketch over here. And I'm going to put the restaurant at the top of the hill. I think that's more interesting. Right up here. In about that much area. So this is still a giant restaurant because it's so far away. And then more rolling hills right here. Maybe that second hill shouldn't be as tall as the first one. It should be a smaller hill. So this first hill should be a lot steeper. Yeah, that's really dramatic. And the next set of hills are much smaller. <laughs> cheeseburger Hill. Yes, this is Cheeseburger Hill. Okay. Maybe there's a hill off into the distance right out here. And then let's put that farmer right around here. The burgers can still be here. Now we've got this definitely more interesting hill with burgers coming down. So we've got the burgers going like this and then like this over the hill. Now it's more like they're going on forever. And they swoop around this part of the mountain and they go out like this. And we've got another row of food right here. And another row. Maybe it wraps around. I'm trying to find a more interesting shape for the direction of this. We're definitely going to have to move that farmer. The farmer is supposed to be in the burger field. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there you are, her farmer.
I can get rid of that sketch behind there. And let's think, what is going to be growing on this side that can go up the hill? Let's go ahead and put it here. And this spans this entire section of the burger farm. Now the trick here is getting these crops to be able to be seen even though they're so far away. You know what, I'm not gonna separate this whole section. I wanna take this part of the crop and say, well, this whole section is that crop. But honestly, I think it might even be more interesting if we just get rid of that section, go in the history tool. We've out of history. Uh, and turn that entire section into a crop. So let's just put a little fence around restaurant and this will be where the opening of the fence is now let's say the crops just go on all around the uh the restaurant house and we still need to separate the crops over here And have row after row after row. And we'll have the crops go up about, well, it can't be that high up in the distance. Maybe we'll just draw some bumps on the, the horizon line to establish the fact that the crops do go far um, back there. Now let's think of some important stuff. What's going to be all the way in the distance? Are we going to have this farm near the shore, or is it going to be near um the woods are going to be tall woods if we had tall woods i vote fries in the background i think fries would be awesome as like woods will's art i completely agree and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure that the stuff in the foreground is much larger than the stuff in the background and we'll just have to imagine that the stuff in the background is the same stuff as the, the stuff in the foreground. But what are we gonna have all the way in the background where that skyline is? It certainly shouldn't disappear. We could have faded out hills where it just drifts off into nothing, or we could do something really funky and have a textured background where it's really surreal. So we don't even live in the same universe. We live where the atmosphere is kind of like cloudy in the chance of rain. It's just a pattern of food coming down from the sky. Um, hmm. Definitely something to ponder. I'll leave that up to you all. Why don't you decide what's going to be in the very, very background? Um, sky woods, says Jason. Yes. The uh, fry woods would be great. So that might be, that might be what it is. I love fries as a, um, just as a, a person who likes to eat fries, but I just don't know how to show it so far away. How do we know that those are fries and not just yellow things of hay sticking out? Hmm. So let's keep moving. We are on the clock. Um, let's decide what the farmer's going to look like. So this is the sketch that we're going to use. 
I'm going to get rid of the stuff that I'm not going to use. I'm not going to toss it in the trash. I'm just going <laughs> to have a folder. It's called delete because it doesn't have anything that we actually want to use in there. And we lock that so we don't end up using it later. And this we'll call rough sketch. Now that we've got that down, exactly what kind of art we're going to be making. We don't have a background yet, but that'll come later. I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit and then lock this layer so that we can make another sketch on top of it, start narrowing down some, um, some of the designs. So I'm going to go to the internet. I know you can't see me do this, but I'm going to the restaurant's main page, I'm on Charleston's page, and I am looking for a picture of the restaurant so that I can use it as reference. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I see bricks. This would be a really interesting farmhouse with bricks. Let me see if I can get one out front. Just a nice big picture of the restaurant. Oh, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna copy this picture. And now I'm going to paste it here. <laughs> I know you can't see it that small. This is what the restaurant looks like. I'm gonna call it reference, just R-E-F. For short and then Charleston's there we go and this is the shape we're going to use for the restaurant now I would love to get a reference for a farmer farmer kneeling or, or even a gardener kneeling kneeling in garden is what I'm going to type in And I'm gonna look for a picture that's very similar to the, the angle that I'm looking for for this farmer. Searching, searching, searching. Ooh, coming on some close references. Let's see if we can find someone with a farmer's hat. Okay, almost there. Okay, so I don't see one that is perfect. So I'm just going to choose the one that's closest to the idea. And it's this one right here. Let me copy it. And I'm going to paste it right here. Let me blow that up a little bit so you can see it. It's this image. The person has on a nice hat and they're kneeling down. They are in profile view, which I, I don't think that's a really harsh compromise. You can go with that.
Bull said if we get the angle of it, so it looks like fries are kind of angled in different directions in the background, it might start looking like a fry background. That's an idea. We'll definitely play with that and see how it translates on uh, the image. So what I'm going to do now is do a rough sketch of this character. So I'm going to do the character first because the character is the most fun. I'm going to lower the opacity and get the scale something like that. Actually, I really don't like this perspective. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try for a different character. Just bear with me one more second. I think it's worth finding an image that's a little bit closer to what we originally wanted. Even this picture is better, I think. If you can see that. I think that's better. The sun could be an onion ring. <laughs> uh, sky ketchup is the background. I do love ketchup red. I think that's a great color. And I think it's surreal enough for the background. Squirting ketchup water in the plants. So I think that's a great idea, except for we'd have to draw a ketchup squirting on the plants. And I, I really wanted the farmer holding the burger. Yeah, the reference is really important. So let's let's go ahead and do a rough sketch of just a really cartoony kind of person um, holding a burger. And let's get hands for holding the burger. See if we can find that reference really quickly. Let's get holding a big burger. Here we go. I'm going to draw this former just a little bit bigger than it will be, just so that we can get. Um, get more detail in there. This will be farmer's head. So that is messy. And then we'll do a body. Kneeling down. Put the burger right around here. Hands are going to go out like a fan.
establish the eye gaze. It's going to be right in here. Big old googly eyes. Little nose. Definitely a smile. Here's where the ears are going to be. Let's get the brim of the hat going. This farmer's hat is really floppy. We make it a little bit more exaggerated to be a little bit of a larger hat. Let me move this burger reference. Let me just erase this floppy part really quickly. Make sure I put the hat on the head. I don't think the floppiness is really translating. I'm going to erase that. Let's get the burger scale in the hands. Already see exactly that. Initially, I wasn't going to draw that burger perspective correctly. But there we go. Let's get the fingers on there. Okay, that's a nice rough sketch of what it's going to be. Oh, but we've got the clothes. Okay, this farmer can be wearing shorts as well. And then should the farmer be wearing flannel? Let's just do a simple shirt, simple button up.
Okay, there's our easygoing farmer. Scale the farmer down a little bit. There we go. Much better. Title that sketch farmer. So we put SK for sketch and then farmer. Lock that. And then I'm going to make a folder for references. I'm going to make sure I name all these references. This is farmer. This is burger. And this is restaurant. Let's go ahead and put these two references away. Oh, this is farmer. This one is re is the restaurant. There we go. Let's see how we're going to make this look. And again, I'm going to use another layer. Maybe a spatula in his belt instead of a spade. That's a good idea. We will see if this can even be seen. Um, but I do think that's a great detail. <laughs> a spatula. Okay, so now let's work on the actual restaurant. Something like this. I'm so tempted just to trace this. But let's see what angle do we want this restaurant at. Hmm, and do we want to change it from the restaurant layout to a farmhouse layout that just happens to have the same name of the restaurant on it? Hmm, decisions, decisions. Let me grab reference for a farmhouse, and then we will see if we can kind of blend the two. And I really want a barn kind of look. Okay, looking, looking. This is more of a style that I was thinking of. I will copy this image and then paste it so you can see it. Something like this. <laughs> so this is very cartoony and I definitely think it embodies the kind of farmhouse feel that this restaurant could have. Now, does this look anything like this? No. Um, how do we incorporate both of them into one farmhouse? Hmm. Let me think. You could definitely use this awning that they have. Put that on over the windows. We could put lights, the way the lights are on the wall are, are on there. Hmm. What else is unique about this? They do have brick. Brick instead of these wood panels. Hmm. 
and the sign, the shape of the sign. I think that might also establish the fact that it's the restaurant. Let me do something and see if I can change the shape of this farmhouse and if it still looks like a farmhouse or if just using the colors of a farmhouse is going to read farmhouse. Let me do a quick little test. So what if we had the same farmhouse shape at the bottom, but then we change the awning a little bit, wood into the kind that uh, the restaurant has. And this was seating instead. With tables. And what if the top of the roof went out instead of in similar to the restaurant right now. And again, this is just a test to see how strange this farmhouse can be skewed and still look like a farmhouse. What if we kept something like this on top? And we still had the doors. The doors aren't too far from the doors of the restaurant. Let's turn this other stuff off. Does that look like a farmhouse? <laughs> Maybe we got a little too far away. What if it was red? What if all this was red? Would it still read farm? Mm. We're forgetting the most important part, which is the sign. I think it reads. I think you can still feel like it's a farmhouse. Oh, thank you, Jason. Thanks. Yes, I think if we add the sign, it'll still read that this is the restaurant. So if we go in there, add a little sign with the edges cut out name of the restaurant I think from a distance we can still tell so let me try putting that on the landscape and see what that looks like
from a distance, can you tell that's the restaurant? Oh, now that it's a little bit smaller, it's a little tricky. I don't think the farmhouse feel is really working out. I think we do have to use the, the actual shape of the restaurant and stick with that. It feels farmy, it just doesn't feel very Charleston's. The only issue with this reference is that it's not a full reference. I can't see around this other end to tell what the, the back side of the restaurant looks like. Let me go online and see if anyone else has taken a photo and if I can find um, the exact image. And if not, I will use Google Maps and we'll try to pull it up that way. Pulled up Charlton's grill and tap. Still see a lot of half images. Hmm. Google Maps it is. Let's get the road view. I know you can't see this, but I am looking at the road view so I can see a full span of the building. Oh, now I see it. Perfect. I'm going to print screen. Oh, you know what? I can even get the exact angle I'm looking for. Let me see if I can navigate myself over here. There we go. This is what I want. I'm going to take a picture of this and then show you what I'm looking at. There you go, copy, and let's paste it. This is the new reference. Let's toss this one out. Here we go. Now this is what I was looking at. Much better. This is the exact angle I would love to use. Let's get rid of this sketch. We are not using it. Put it in the delete folder. <laughs> So it looks like this part of the building is where it ends. And then this is another building because all the pictures I see stop right around here. So this whole section, including the seating, is the restaurant. Oh, thank you so much, Robert. Okay, so what I'm going to do now with this reference is turn down the opacity a little bit, and I'm going to do a full, just rough trace over it. This is the exact angle I'm looking for. Let's 
So let's go ahead and get another layer. Okay, we've got a bit of a wall. I love this angle. Now, the reason why I'm doing a rough sketch is because this is going to be a little cartoony. But I do want it to have uh, some sort of grounding in reality. Oh, there's a plant pot right here. And we have the fence we were looking for. Let's put the same plant pot. So let's let the plant pot be a staple for every single section. Actually, I think the line of the fence is a little off from where the plants are. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. There you go, that's much better. I'm just gonna get the big pillars uh, from the fence, not the little ones yet. Okay, so we're getting a nice idea of how I want this to go. Some things I want to exaggerate about this building. First, let's just get the foundation of the building in there. So some things we're going to lose already are the benches. I just don't think they're going to be able to be seen from that far away in the drawing. We're definitely keeping the doors. This is an example. So we have this little area right here, and it lines up perfectly with the beginning of the ends of the doors, but just visually, it doesn't look that great to have it completely lined up. So we're just gonna use this as the beginning of the doors. And then we have the sign right here. So the sign is something we're definitely going to exaggerate because the sign is rather small compared to the building. So we're going to turn this into a much larger sign. <laughs> hate when my brush splotches like that oh 
Okay, so now I'm going to use my lasso tool. Oops. Make this much larger. Make it about that big. This tree is right in the way <laughs> of where I'm looking, but I'm just gonna imagine past it. And then we've got these right here. And I cannot see the one by the tree, but I can go ahead and assume that there is one there. And for the sake of this image, we're going to pretend like this is a standalone. And we're going to put the awning out here. And I'm going to go ahead and exaggerate these awnings just a little bit. Just for a little bit more character, I'm going to change these lines up. Now, another thing that's a characteristic of this building are the lights. These lights are really small, and I'm going to exaggerate the lights just a little bit. Make sure we get that in there. Oh, we do not have this part of the floor. So I'm going to make the lights a little bit bigger than they actually are, and I'll show you that in a second. First, let me finish these awnings. Didn't realize there were so many more that I missed behind this tree. Okay, time for the lights. I'm going to draw the lights on a different layer, just in case I mess up. And just get an idea of the shape of the lights. There we go. So that'll be the shape. I'm going to put that right in the center and then copy it a few times. Make a few more. So these lights are a little larger than life. 
We merge this together. And let's do some lights out here. Now there are three sets of lights right above the sign. But I'm going to have them go a little higher up. I'm going to change the angle of it a little bit since it is higher. I put one there and I'll put one, oops, one here. Move that up a little bit. And then I'll put one over here, closer to this end. I think that center one needs to move a little bit. Okay, now this is where we're going to be lined up. Merge that together. Brush tool for the little arch. Okay, now we do have lights on this side as well, on this side of the building. Let's go ahead and draw some there. I'm gonna merge these white layers. And I think it looks good with one light out there. No, maybe two. Another one right there. Okay. Let's see what the sketch looks like. Not bad. Not bad at all. Is there anything missing? We're missing the doors. Now, this door system is not the same way as uh, um, the way I, I plan on drawing it, but what I'm gonna do, since the sign is here twice in the um, windows, there's one right here, and I'm gonna establish this as a door, and I'm gonna just split it in half and make them almost like traditional barn doors. So that's how we'll bring the barn back. And I think that'll read clearly from a distance that these are doors, and these are door handles. And then we have this sign here. May end up making the sign larger. Here we go. Let me center it a little bit more. There. Now we do have seating in this area right around here. Oh, we're missing a bowl. Let me put a bowl here. Let me merge these two.
So we'll have to draw seating. But first, let's see if that even can be seen. Let me get rid of. Oh, nope, that's the farmer. What layer is this on? Oh, it's in delete. Okay, there we go. Much better. Let me turn the landscape back on. And let's see what can be seen from a distance. We minimize this. I have a feeling the seating area might not be seen. So we're going to have to change um, the width of this hill. <laughs> if we make it this size. Yeah, that's a good size. Are we too high up on the, the image? We might be a little too high up. We'll lower this. It right here. Hmm. Yes, the hill will have to change a bit. So let's go ahead and change this hill. Get rid of this section. Off this layer. Could we angle the seating area a little bit to look like it's on a hill? Is that doable? Yes, let's do that. Let's establish the hill. Be a little bit more modest. And then let's warp this whole image to fit on the hill. So what we're gonna do is go here. Maybe warp. Start warping it into the shape of the hill. Now, this is not how things warp in the real world, but we are doing something a lot more cartoony. Ooh, maybe that's a little too warped. Let's pull it down a little bit. Not bad. The restaurant on the hill, move it down. Let's shrink it a little bit. Mm. 
Okay. Now let's get rid of that background that's in the middle of the restaurant. It's a little distracting. Okay, so now we have a restaurant on the hill. Let's make sure it's at the top of the hill, so let's get rid of this line. Mm. Now that I'm looking at it from this distance, it just looks, looks a little odd. Yeah, let's, let's go back and try something else. That was just too strange. Now it's too far off. I guess this is fine right here. I keep thinking it looks a little bit off with this being so angular and everything else being really curved. Maybe the building should be exaggerated even more. Like the building should be much larger than the seating area. Could bring in the seating area. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, much better. I think it's much more balanced now. I'm gonna undo that just for the sake of having it. No, I'll, I'll keep it. Let's keep it. Yeah, this is what it looks like now, much better. Something was throwing me off. And because we're not using the farmer anymore in the reference, let's go ahead and remove this farmer. So this is looking much better already. Let's continue the background a little bit. And the next field of crops should go down there and then start opening up right around here. <laughs> right up into the fence. Let's change this hill. Have the crops going a little further out. Okay, I think that looks better. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go ahead and 
start sketching in some of these burrs. So we do want to have some sort of order to how the burgers are growing so that it makes sense. So this is the size of the burger here, and this is the size of the burger here. So how do we get from here to here, and what does that look like down there? So the burgers are all going to be around this size around here. Uh, let's see what in the what the size is going to be around here. Halfway point maybe is right around here. The burgers being about this size. There should be another burger size right around in here. And you'll see I'm using a different layer. And one thing I have not done this entire time, shame on me, is save. I think it's right on my desktop. There we go. Would hate for anything to happen. Let's do some more burger sizes. Let's go ahead and take the ones that are off the main burgers out of there so you can see this a little clearer. So this is the foreground of the burgers. And let's put some more burgers going back. This is a lot of burgers. There's a part of me that really wishes that this was <laughs> realistic and that I could go out and just pick up some burgers. Now, at what point do we decide to stop drawing burgers? That's the real question. 
when does it just start to disappear? And I think we've still got a lot of rows before we get to the, the vanishing of the burgers. We can stop there for right now. Let's go back to our burger image and make sure we have a strong burger image. Let me put the rough sketch like this. Lower the opacity a bit and lower the opacity of, actually, let me merge these two together. Okay, now we can lower the opacity of the entire thing and start doing the fun stuff, drawing a burger. Okay, let's go in the reference folder. There's a burger, turn that burger on. I'm gonna pull it out just for the sake of working with it right now. Put this in the references, we're not using it. Burger on top. Let's draw a big old juicy burger. Scoot this over. I'm gonna turn off some of the layers that I don't need right now. Even the main layer I don't need right now. Okay, let's start our rough burger sketch. I'm gonna do another layer for my really rough sketch. Now we do want this to be kind of a picturesque burger, so it's not gonna look as realistic as this burger. And then we've got this one on the bottom. Let's put the patty right there on the bottom of the, the burger. So unlike the picture, the patty is not gonna be close to the top. Let's make the bottom of this bun a little flatter. I'm used to seeing buns with flatter bottoms.
And now let's start adding on some of our, our um, burger accessories like cheese. Gotta have melting cheese, definitely. And then let's have pickles. Pickles are gonna start round. And you can really tell the pickle because of the way it's cut. And then we should have some lettuce. Ooh, the lettuce can be a little tricky. A little bit more lettuce. And let's put some onion rings in there. <laughs> this is a great burger. I'm getting hungry just looking at it. We've got to have some ketchup. Now, where should we put the ketchup at the top? I usually put mine at the top, but I think it might read even better if we put it at the bottom. Just a few drips of ketchup coming out from the bottom. And I know this burger, for the reference, doesn't have it, but we've got to put some sesame seeds on there. Now that starts to read burger. So let's make that bone on the bottom even flatter. Make it a little bit more square. Much better. Let's thicken up the top of this bun a little bit. Adding a little bit of squareness to it on the sides. <laughs> you know what would be hilarious? If we had a toothpick or the skewer, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Some people use toothpicks, some people use skewers, but we should have an olive. Right there. <laughs> right there sticking out of the burger. <laughs> uh, the angle of this is a little off. Let me re-angle this. Much better. <laughs> now we have a burger. Let me separate this. 
this back in the reference section. Is that on there? Voila, we have a burger. One reference as a burger for the rest of our burger farm. And I'm gonna make a duplicate of it, just so that we have a copy. I'm gonna turn it off. And now let's go back to our main burger farm with everything in it. And let's put that big juicy burger there. Lock that layer. Scale it up. And there we go, big juicy burger. And let's duplicate it again. Now we're gonna alter these burgers from burger to burger, but overall it's gonna be the same kind of burger. This is looking much better. Let's See if we can reduce the opacity on this main image even more. There we go, now we can see it a lot clearer. And for these three burgers, let's merge them and then reduce their opacity as well. And now I'm gonna go in and do a little bit more fun um, stuff and start drawing some burger. Okay, that's where the burger is. Let's get some line work in there. Another layer. I'm gonna scale it up. And it's time to make a decision. What is the line weight gonna be for the front part of this image. And I, I do want it to be a heavy line weight, so something big like this is great. It is gonna be really cartoony and the line weight will get more and more reduced as we move back throughout the image. So let's begin drawing this burger. I'm gonna start with seeds. Oh, let me make sure the flow is all the way up on this brush. go. Nice little seeds on this bud. You know what? I think I'm going to turn that off. Oh, fine. That's still fine. You know what I don't like? I don't like how sensitive this is. I'm gonna go into my brush settings and make some changes.
seeing this real time, me deciding how I want this and to go. <sighs> this nice and smooth. Hmm. All right. This is what we're working with. I'm going to draw one seed and see if I can duplicate that. What that looks like. No, I don't like that. Just do it fast and loose. More seeds, seeds for the burger. I don't like that last one. Okay, that's enough seeds. Okay, time to make the bun. Actually, let's do the olive and then the bun. Now let's do the bun first. We can make a nice arch. I'm going to use another layer. I am a layer queen. I love using different layers. Burger is just going to dip in a little bit where the seeds are. Okay. Oh, I forgot the burger is going to be thicker, thicker burger. Well, that's too high. And thick burger. Okay, perfect. Now, time to put a little olive on there. Let me look at an olive and make sure that I'm drawing the olive correctly.
Okay, it's a good image. There's the olive. What they do to stick through the olive. Now all of this we merge together. Oop, got one part. Bun needs to be erased right here. There we go, to the top of the burger. Start drawing more burger. Yeah, not bad. Now for the lettuce. See a little bit of onion ring coming out right here. Hmm, let's redo that one. Let's have a bigger onion ring. I want it to dip down. Now let's draw the lettuce right under it. More lettuce. Now for the Ooh, there's another piece of lettuce right here. Let's draw the pickles. lines on the pickles. Now for the cheese. Ooh, cheese is a fun part. Fairly straightforward. And for the bun, not the bun, the 
the patty. <laughs> now it's time for the patty. More of that burgerness. Mm, maybe a little too much on the top. Now time for the bun. And for the ketchup. There we go. That's a nice sloppy burger. Turn off the main under it for the burger. Hmm, not bad. That's one burger down, 20 million to go. Okay, let's go to the next burger. And start the same exact way with drawing the seeds first. You go ahead and get the olive. And then the stick's going to come through. And the bun. Okay. 
thick burger. Let's get an onion ring going right around here. Another onion ring. And some lettuce. Now let's get the pickle. More lettuce. And some cheese. And now for the burger patty. Now let's get this bun right underneath. And the gooey ketchup. Okay, we've got two burgers. Now I've got this burger to do. Start with doing the seeds. time to do bun, nice thick bun. Oh, it's a little too straight. And olive.
Now it's time for an onion ring. Let's do some lettuce. Add a pickle. With the pickle lines. Let's do another pickle right here. Lettuce sticking out. And the cheese. And now the burger patty. And now the bun. And that gooey ketchup. So we have been drawing for two hours straight now. My arms are a little tired. Let's see what we have with the burger. Oh, looks good. That first row of burgers is done. Now it's time for the next row of burgers. <laughs> I'm gonna decrease the size of this brush. Let's see what a 45 looks like. Not that noticeable. How about a 35? Better. Take it down to 35. Now let's do another burger. So now we need to get more burgers. We do not need this reference anymore. I'm going to put it in the delete folder. We do have a burger here as a reference. I'm going to duplicate it. That up there. Turn this back off. Now let's scale it down to the burger size that we chose. Which is this size right here. Let's zoom back in. And draw some burgers. So that one's gonna go there. Oh, let's put one, let's put one right here. So, that's good, having two of them there.
Now let's zoom in and draw the burger. Let's lower the opacity. And see more of the burger. And a new layer. To make sure we don't draw on the old layers, let's go ahead and lock them. And I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to start with the top of the toothpick. And continue drawing the olive. And then start drawing the seeds. And now I'm going to draw the top of the bun. And the edge line of the burger. We should name this actually, this should be one burger. It's the first row of burgers. We'll call this two burger. Now we're going to do onion ring. And some lettuce. Some pickles. Whoops. All the lines for the pickles. Now for the cheese. And the patty. Fun. And that gooey ketchup. Oh, it's much faster. Now for that next burger. We don't see the olive in this one, so we're just going to go ahead and start doing the seeds. And the 
and the bun. Nice thick bun. Time for the onion ring. Lettuce, pickle, cheese, now the patty, And the bun. And that gooey ketchup. Okay, now we've got two rows of burgers. Now for our third row of burger. I'm going to do is block this layer and then go to our burger reference. Duplicate it. Move it up to the top. We're going to put our burger references away. Shrink it down to the next burger size. go. Duplicate it right here. these angles a little bit just gives it a little variety add some visual interest Merge these layers, lower the opacity, and now let's add another layer on top of it. Let me walk this layer first and then add another layer on top of it. And this is what we're going to draw, and this will be three burger.
And let's lower the brush size once again. Let's try 20 and see what that looks like. Oh, that's too close. Let's do a 10. Yes, a 10. I think that looks good. To start with drawing the olive stick and the olive. The rest of the stick. Get it a little closer. Now some seeds. And now the bun. Nice thick bun. Let's go ahead and get some onion rings going. And some lettuce. Let us not forget the lettuce. Pickles. Ooh, pickles a little too much like the onion ring. More lettuce and the cheese. Now the patty. And now for the bun. And the gooey ketchup, of course. Okay, now time for the second olive stick. With the olive. And the seeds.
the bun. Nice thick bun. Some lettuce. And a little bit of pickle sticking out. Time for the cheese. And the patty. Now for the bun. And it's starting to get really cramped now. Going to take a break at some point. Time for the olive. <laughs> that needs to be a song. Olive time. Let me get even closer so I can see this better. There's some seeds. Now I've had some burger buns that had a lot of seeds on it. And I really enjoyed it. I like having seeds on top of my bun. These are going to have just like a minimal amount of seeds. You don't want you crunching your burger now. Time for the bun. Nice thick bun. And some onion rings. Time for some lettuce. And some more lettuce. And now the pickle. Another pickle over here. And the cheese. Cheese time!
and the patty. Nice, thick, juicy, sizzling patty. Hot off the grill. There we go. You know these bumps are? These are flavor bumps. <laughs> Just made that up. Now time for the second patty. Well, the second bun, excuse me. Second bun underneath. Okay, there we go, juicy burger. Yay, we have our third row done. This reference goes into references. I am going to massage my wrist. Ooh, my wrist is really feeling it. It's definitely coming together. Hmm. We're going to do our fourth row of burgers. And we're going to keep the same exact um, width for the, I guess, stroke value. I don't want to, what's the, the layman's terms? Uh, we're going to use the same, the same width for the, the brush. We're not going to make it smaller. Or maybe we could go one more. <laughs> I'm so tempted, but we're at a 10 right now. You go to five. See what that looks like. Not bad. I'm going a little closer. You can go to three. <laughs> no, that might be a little ridiculous. And threes win. <laughs> We're going to a three. Okay, now let's get that burger reference. Here it is. Bring it up here. Let's shrink it down to the exact size that we need. What size are we going for? I think it's this size. Yeah, that size. Ooh, this needs to be a little closer. Okay, let's do it again. The land of burgers. I tell you, this is definitely a fantasy.
Oh, that's enough for that size right there. Now I'll leave you one more on the other side. Okay, let's merge these all together. And then lower the opacity. Lock the layer. Now this new layer is gonna be called four burger. Robert, you said you think you made a bunch of these burgers. <laughs> yes. Get in really close so we can see these burgers. And it's burger time. Time to start drawing. First thing I'm going to do is draw a stick. I'm going to have to get in much closer. It's very small. I have that Scooby-Doo song stuck in my head. Terror Time. I was watching a bunch of Scooby-Doo movies earlier today. You know that song? What's well, terror time again? When you just watch all fun, it's terrifying time. I love that song. Okay, I'm going to finish this burger up. Yeah, wait, just a little bit further. There we go. Now it's time for the bun. Big old thick bun. Do an onion ring. And a pickle. Piece of lettuce sticking off to the side. Okay, 
Okay, let's see what we have so far. So this is where we are leaving off for tonight in the sketch stage. We still have a lot of sketching off in here. And we have some final line work done here, but we have not added any color. We have not painted anything. Thank you so much for your input tonight. I can't wait until, you know, another time when we can finish this drawing. All right, well, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.